Well, happy Labor Day. Make sure before we get this video going that you like or you share or you actually hit that little bell for the notification when our, our videos come up that you will be notified. Now, Labor Day is here and we wanna celebrate all those guys out there that do tube work. And these boiler tubes get welded, they get beaded and they get rolled. And today we're gonna to be looking at that on the boiling point. Welcome to The Boiling Point. We're with Steve Taylor, Director of the Rental Division, and we're gonna be talking a little bit today about beating, rolling, welding the tube. Now, Steven's not um, a novice at this. He's in the rental division, but he actually worked a lot of time out here in the shop uh, yeah. doing this. An a long time. So, yeah. uh, got a few years anyway. Steven's been yeah. with us about 35 years, so a lot of knowledge here. Well, let's talk a little bit about the beating and rolling, and first, let's just talk about um, rolling. You know, why are we actually rolling the tube? Well, a lot of people think that the weld that's on there actually seals the tube. It doesn't. It has a different process, what it's there for, and we'll talk about that. Uh, the sealing of the tube in the tube sheet is done by rolling in it. So you're just, more or less, you're pressing that tube out against the tube sheet really, really hard with a roll, and that's the entire process that seals that tube to the tube sheet. The rest of this is superfluous. It, it doesn't do anything to seal the tube. Okay. So mm -hmm. the, uh, the beading? What is that for? The beating, you know, if you leave that tube sticking out like this, at least on the hot pass, which is the very first pass where the, the you know, the, the hot gas of the fire comes down through here, by the time it gets back here, it's 2,000 degrees, hits the rear door, or if it's a water back boiler, the water back, and turns, it goes back. So we're talking 18, 1900 degrees here. If you leave it sticking out like this, that's gonna overheat and start to crack. When it starts to crack, it's gonna to continue to go in until it cracks inside, then you're gonna have a leak in that tube. You can't have that. Okay. So all this does, we're trying to transfer that heat. We wanna get the heat off the end of that tube, transferred to that tube sheet. And one of the ways to do that is to bead that tube, turn that over, seal that against the tube sheet, and that, that transfers the heat straight to the tube sheet, protects the end of that tube, that's all it's for. Okay, and sometimes you see welding on one side and then yeah, th beating and, on the other. Right, typically the, the welding is on the, on the hottest pass, the very end of the boiler, the, 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 the first pass where it starts back through from the Morrison tube back around. And we like to, to, to weld the hot pass, a lot of the manufacturers do, and we follow their procedures. It does a better job. If you're 18, 1900 degrees here, over time, you will have some of those tubes will start to leak, they'll, it, they'll just overheat. Okay. But if you weld that and seal weld that, it just gives you a better seal from the end of that tube to the tube sheet. And all we're doing is trying to transfer that heat. And that's what that's there for. Okay. Well, we thought it'd be kind of a good idea to really go through each one of these processes uh, from rolling uh, to beating and the welding and mm -hmm. really how we do that. Steven's going to walk through. We're going to have our man Jimmy come in and he's actually going to do that. All right. Well, we got my man Jimmy Kurt Singer that's going to be doing the hard labor for us here and he's going to get started. Steven, why don't you walk through the process as he starts this, uh, the rolling process on what he's actually doing. Okay, what he's gonna do here is do a straight roll on this tube. These tubes we're gonna seal weld like this one is. So you're gonna do a straight roll. Jimmy, go ahead and show us what you're gonna do. See, he'll oil at first, get some oil in there, some lubrication so those rolls don't lock up inside that tube. Slide the tube in there. This pin is tapered all the way in. So the further that pin goes in, the more it pushes those rolls out against those, that tube. You hear that roll bogging down, that motor bogging down? That's that roll really tightening up against that tube and pressing it out. And that's pretty much it. He's done the roll. What would happen now is he would seal weld that, and then he would come back and roll it again, and that tube's done. That's how quick it happens. Now, Stephen, can you actually roll that too much? Yeah, you can. If you roll it too much, uh, you'll thin that tube out, and you'll, you'll keep somebody further down the road if that tube was to leak, uh, they, they scaled the boiler up, uh, something happened and they overheated it and caused it to start leaking, they shocked the boiler, pulled that tube a little bit loose from that tube sheet and they had to re-roll it. If you roll it too much, then they can't re-roll it, they have to cut the tube out and put a new tube in there. Well, I know and sometimes we sell a new boiler um, and they'll actually show up on the job site and they're actually leaking. Um, you'll bring the roll out. Is that 
typically what happens? That's or? typically what happens. Well, a lot of times in transit, they'll get shook up and, the, and they'll loosen up. But it's real common for a brand new boiler to have tubes leaking in it until they heat it up and fire it the first time. Everything swells up, all the tubes stretches, all the tubes stretch. Get all that process going through. Then you may have some tubes leak a little bit. You come in and tighten them up just a little bit, just to snug them. You're good to go. Okay. Okay, so the tube has been rolled, and so now we're just going to go ahead and weld. Jimmy, why don't you go ahead and uh, start that and get out of the way. So now he's going to take a, uh, a pencil grinder, clean the inside of the tube so that when he re-rolls, he doesn't get any of that splatter in the rolls themselves. So now he's going to re-roll that tube to tighten it up after welding it. This time he'll use a Collins roll, just a different style roll that doesn't flare, doesn't do anything to it, just a straight roll. Go ahead, Jimmy. Okay, so now we're going to do a new process. It's called beating, um, and we're going to actually flare the tube first, right? Yep. And then he's going to come back and he's actually going to do the yep. bead, right? Yep. Okay. So he's using a completely different type of roll. It has a uh, rollers on it that are at an angle, and that's going to put the flare to the end of that tube. So we'll, we'll do the same process. Okay. You see, that, that roll is a combination roll. It rolls the tube into the tube sheet, and it flares the end of it at the same time, preparing it so we can beat it like this one is. So now we're going to move on to actually beating the end of that, tool, that tube. This tool is a special tool they use. Uh, and they'll form these themselves to get the right curvature of exactly what they want to use. Use a little uh, air uh, hammer uh, to do it with, and, and it's a technique that requires a lot of skill. It, it took me a long time to learn how to do it, uh, and it requires a lot of arm strength that I don't have anymore. So go ahead, Jimmy, show us how this is done. Oh, there that that towards the end Jimmy was going around pretty fast with it that's how you get that smooth surface to it if you didn't do that if you went real slow with it you'd have jags in there and it would look like it, it doesn't hurt it it just looks awful uh, so Jimmy's done a good job he's done that a lot of times so you, you can tell by the way he put that in there so it's perfect perfect beaded tube so he's beaded that tube the last thing in this process is to touch that up when you bead that tube there's a chance you could loosen that tube up a little bit so he'll go in with that Collins roll, that straight roll, touch it up just like we did on the other end when we welded it, and that'll be the end of that tube. It'll be sealed up. All right, well, thanks, Jimmy. Thanks, Stephen, for uh, coming out here. It's always good to have one of these jigs. These guys actually practice this all the time, and I uh, really just appreciate you taking the time to, to show everybody this to beating rolling and welding and we'll see you next time on the boiling point.